why study biogeometry? What's the purpose of, of uh, my talk? Well, basically, there are um, toxins and environmental aspects, electrosmog, bacteria, etc. And in fact, uh, biogeometry can help neutralize and affect those areas. And that's the reason for uh, doing this. So what the heck is uh, biogeometry? Well, it's a, it's a science. It's a science of establishing harmony uh, between biological fields and their environment through the use of design, the language of color, form, motion, and sound. And that's by Ibrahim Karim, the founder of uh, biogeometry. And this is just a picture of his book, uh, Back to the Future for Mankind. And in fact, that's exactly what we'll be doing. We're going back uh, in time to look and rediscover uh, principles that were, have been lost for a long period of time. And uh, Ibrahim has helped bring this back and it's proving very, very useful. And Ibrahim is an Egyptian, um, studied in uh, Switzerland. He's an architect. He's also a very good scientist and intuitive person. Um, <clears throat> And he's been advising the Egyptian uh, government uh, in areas of health uh, and culture. But the tools he's uh, looked at comes basically from the Egyptians, from the past. And I'll go into that a little bit. And it's also been a, a study that uh, has been rediscovered by the French radiesthesia. And uh, Dominique uh, last year talked about uh, the field of radiesthesia, which is a very important field. And here you see a guy peering, uh, an a guy from the ancient times peering out into another reality. And that's what uh, we'll be doing with biogeometry. In biogeometry, the tools are there. We've just seen it as scepters and things of that nature. But the, they are tools for detecting energies. Uh, and the onk uh, that you see there is a tool that gives off energy. And we see the evidence in ancient times in our cathedrals throughout Europe. Um, and you see it in the pyramids and you see it at the mosques because they're all centered around ley lines or Hartman grid lines. And how do, how do these lines come about and how do you find them? Well, the tools were there that uh, were able to do that. We owe a lot to uh, radius seizure and um, Ibrahim Karim, got, the way he got into this is sort of just an interesting story. Uh, he was sent to Paris on an assignment from the Egyptian government. And uh, he went to the Maison de Radiesthesia. And uh, there, uh, a lady said, ah, we've been, are you an Egyptian? He said, yes, and we've been expecting you. And that's because Claire Voyant had told the lady that Egyptian will be coming, and at that point, give him the books and tools of radiesthesia. And he went into the basement and he got all the tools and uh, that got the whole thing started. And then in terms of uh, the pioneers in radiesthesia, we, Dominique talked about Chomery and the Blissiel. And uh, well, part of the, the investigation into this by Chomery resulted in his death, just like Madame Curie and radium. And he, one day, his friend found him mummified. And that's because he was experimenting with being, uh, enlarging or getting more of the energy and it can have a negative effect. Anil is another pioneer and he discovered something called negative green. And I'll talk about that uh, in this slide. Because if you have a sphere, you bring it out into the sun and you use the tools of radiesthesia you can detect resonance with the color green in the direction of the sphere pointing towards the sun. And if you look at either side of that sphere, you can detect yellow, uh, orange, red, IR, etc. And the other side, you'll see that you can get, detect the energies of uh, blue and indigo and violet and UV. And far to the other side of the uh, opposite side of the sphere, you detect the negative green. And they just call it negative green because it's an energy that penetrated through the whole sphere. So it's a penetrating energy. Uh, but you can do this if you draw a circle and you orient any, any direction in the circle that's north will have green and the opposite side will have negative green. And then you have the rest of the spectrum of uh, colors uh, thereabouts. So without a compass and without these tools, you can detect these energies. 
and you have a hemisphere, you can do the same thing. In this case, you don't need to orient it north or south, but you'll get the green or the negative green and the rest of the energies that are uh, there. And the same thing with the pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, coming through, you'll have the green, the positive green, the regular green. The opposite side would be the energies of negative green. And you've heard about cats being mummified in, py in pyramids. Part of it is due to the negative uh, green. And surrounding it, due to orientation, are all the other uh, energies that are there. So shape, pyramid, hemisphere, certain energies will come through and you have the negative green and green on one side. And so a pyramid does the same thing, uh, green, negative green, uh, that are there. But it turns out that there are two aspects of these energies, just like electromagnetic radiation. There's a vertical and horizontal component, and the vertical component is electrical, and horizontal component is magnetic. Same with these energies, there's two components to it. And the vertical is always detrimental to a biological life, human life, and the horizontal is very beneficial. And basically, uh, well, I just said, said that in terms of, of uh, if you have these, uh, if you have a pyramid, if you're underneath a pyramid, you think, ah, oh, this will give me some inner good energies. Well, it can have some negative effects. Mummification was one of the effects that uh, occurred. Uh, but how can you get rid of some of these uh, vertical components? Well, you can make changes. Uh, pyramids, you can make indentations, and you put peaks into, hem into, sphere, into hemispheres, and you see that. Uh, uh, here, you should see the hemispheres that are uh, there, and ways that you can get rid of the negative aspects of these energies. And you see it in the cathedrals. Why the heck do they always have structures that are peaks? on uh, cathedral domes. There's a reason. The ancients knew about it. We've just lost the understanding of it. Um, and then the pyramids, the same thing. Uh, there's a slight indentation on the basis of the pyramids. And the reason for that is to get rid of the vertical negative green, which is detrimental. And so you only have the positive. Let me talk about a slightly different subject that's very much related. The physics of quality. In science, we're dealing with numbers, quantitative. Nature, meaning us, deals with quality. And so we deal with color, but we know that's just an electromagnetic uh, radiation at a certain uh, wavelength. And we deal with sound, etc. And those are just things that are quantitative in terms of uh, regular physics. But quality and quantity are the same, two faces of the same thing. <clears throat> and we deal with resonance. Uh, we may not be always aware of that, but uh, we are receptors of resonance also. If you have a monochord, you pluck it, then it'll give off the tone. But if you have monochords at different octaves above or below that, it's gonna vibrate. So we are being affected whether, and color and sound are the same thing in terms of octaves. 24 octaves, it'll, it'll resonate. And biogeometry, the purpose of that is to, from, uh, from the shapes and colors and sounds, uh, angles and numbers, you create resonance. And I'll get to what BG3 is in just a few moments, because that's an important uh, area. Uh, and I just said that red really is the same as do or the note C. It's just at a different octave. And that's the reason in healing you can say sound can heal, color can heal. It's the same thing, but it's just at a different resonance, uh, basically. Whoops. Okay. Uh, quality of physics. Uh, here you see a, uh, a picture of what this uh, means. We operate with nerve signals. The nerve signals are the same, whether it be from color or sound, or taste, uh, or the feel of, of things, or the smell. And it turns out that uh, objects of angles and shapes can have the same types of effects on us. We're just recipients of the quality of uh, nature. And you think of this also in terms of 
you have the vibrations or, or that the senses pick up, then you have the nerve impulses at another level, and then another level you have the signals that are there, which are the colors that we see and the sounds that we hear and th things that we taste and smell. And then another level, it's the perceived uh, reality, what our memory bank says, that's red, or that's is this sound of dough, or whatever it might be. And then beyond that, it's that projection into reality, into space-time, that gives us what we uh, enjoy. The structures, uh, sacred power spots throughout the world give off certain energies. Uh, we've never, it hasn't been tested before, but they do. And that's what the field of radiesthesia and biogeometry did. Um, pyramids give off the energies, and we talked about that. Cathedrals are located at very powerful power spots. So the ancients knew about that. Dolmens uh, give off energy, and same with the menhirs, which are those stone uh, shapes that are there. If you have a dolmen, and you just get two pieces of wood, and you have an overhang on it, and you orient it in a north-south direction, you'll detect these energies. Uh, and these energies that it'll detect that are harmonizing for humans is called BG3 energies. BG3 energy stands for the carrier wave, the negative green that goes through. And what Ibrahim Karim discovered were the other two uh, energies. Um, it's harmonics of ultraviolet and harmonics of gold. But these energies are there when you look at uh, these structures and areas of these structures. And in the pyramids, where the king's chamber is located, it's the highest level of energy of these BG3 energies and of negative green. And above the king's chamber, within the pyramid structure, are shapes and piles. And these shapes are accentuating and being the batteries, basically, that enable more energy to go through into that uh, chamber. So a lot of energy is going into that king's chamber. And Ibrahim Karim, through his discoveries, his main contribution, or biggest big contribution is, what are the other energies that are associated with these power spots? And these are the harmonizing energies of uh, ultraviolet and of, of gold. And these energies are found at dawn and found, you know, you see the pictures of saints with uh, auras around them in gold. So the ancients sort of knew about uh, this stuff. So, how do you use these things and what happens? Uh, motion, a boat going through water, electromagnetic energy moving through space, creates waves. And here we talk about compression waves, it could be scalar waves. And if you have an object, an object could be color, could be a physical shape, could be sound, will have an effect on it, just as you see in this, uh, this slide. And so while biogeometry uses an energy key that when there's motion, there's energy going around it, just like when you blow air through a flute, there's energy around it. And this, you can look at this as a sort of a torus-like structure in terms of energy movement around that uh, motion. So biogeometry deals with all these things of colors and shapes to interact with fields. Uh, these energy fields and to create more harmony. And why create harmony? We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but it'll have an effect on us emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, uh, and we are, in fact, uh, can be a recipient of these energies and it can have um, healing aspects uh, to it. And what are the instruments that detect it? We've been talking about people measuring these instruments. Well, we talked about the monochord, and you can see amplitude and wave and length on that. A pendulum has the same thing. A pendulum has amplitude and length to it, and it's the same tool. Except with a pendulum, you're involved in the measurement of it, but you're, it's not in terms of uh, mental dowsing. In mental dowsing, you think about if you'd use a pendulum, or you can get a yes or no answer. And last year, when Dominique gave her talk, you learned that uh, there's something called physical radiesthesia. And all you're doing is holding that pendulum. You may initiate the movement on it, but you're holding it. And if you get a clockwise rotation, that particular resonance for that energy is, is there. 
Okay, and this is just some tools of it. Uh, the angles of the pendulums will give you these uh, tools, give you the uh, energies that are there. And uh, let me just skip through since I just got a few minutes uh, there. Uh, let me just skip through in terms of how to use these uh, tools. If you have a circle, in the center of a circle is in balance and there's harmony. And that, ha if you look at it, it has, ba has BG3 energy. You have something that's uh, discordant, you won't find that BG3 energy uh, with it. But you can use sound, color, or whatever, shapes, and you can then find and create harmony in that environment. And that's what we'll do, and we'll see what he did with electrosmog. Uh, whereas medicine used dosages to create that, try to create that harmony. Electrosmog, we have waves. Uh, we all operate through waves as biological uh, creatures. Cell towers create thousands of times more uh, uh, interference. How are we to operate and what's going to be happening as we move into the future? Well, uh, in terms of what the evidence, what's the evidence of, of this working? Um, when Swisscom put a cell tower at the highest point of, in the city of Hamburg, people started getting sick electrosensitivities, uh, animals, uh, birds were uh, left and bats left. And uh, the government asked Ibrahim, okay, see what you can do. And he put in uh, some emitters, uh, he, uh, called Hamburg, Hamburg emitters, around uh, where the uh, energy was coming from. And in homes, he created uh, these cubes, which gave off, which had different designs on it, and these designs had uh, biogeometry significance. And what he found was that uh, in terms of uh, frequencies of complaints, the frequency was very high before he started this and after he instituted uh, his uh, uh, solutions to it using the cubes and using the bio, using the emitters, the problems went away. And you can see that from the graph here. And I won't go through these two, but these are the things that he looked at uh, in terms of uh, the problems uh, that were there. And this is just an eye chart, uh, basically. But whether it be the head, body, etc., cetera, uh, things were happening that uh, uh, caused the problems to go away. So shapes do work. Uh, bow signatures are things that he created that resonates with the organs. And Therefore, the organs can become healthier as a result. And how did he prove that? Uh, well, let's see. He, he, did, he participated in the National uh, Research Center in Cairo on the National Hepatitis C Project. And if you look at uh, enzymes, liver enzymes, you can see what's happening. And they decided to do a study of all the different types of remedies and drugs for hepatitis. And that uh, when they finally looked at the results after six months, the best drugs had a 50% impact on uh, the liver enzymes and other remedies ra ranged around 20 to 30%. But his biosignatures, his pendants that had the signatures for the helping the liver and helping the, the immune system resulted in 90% normalization, the highest of all the uh, aspects. So, whether it be viruses or electrosmog, these things can have an effect. If you take a cube, put it near water, uh, you've all heard of Emoto's um, studies, then you see the crystals, ice crystals that form. They're nice and geometric. Uh, when you give it uh, good intentions, that's Emoto's work. And you see the same thing with the, uh, uh, with, with the biogeometry tools. If you take uh, livestock, uh, or in this case chicken, on a chicken farm, you put placards of, pick, of colors and you neutralize the room in terms of, of making it harmonious, basically. You don't no longer need it uh, to give the antibiotics and things of that nature. And you do the same thing with uh, an orchard farm. Certain structures are there and you can get, um, basically, uh, get rid of some of the uh, pesticides that are being used. And he, used, he tried some experiments growing uh, sweet potatoes in using water from the Red Sea. 
And you, here you see the controls that were there uh, versus uh, normal water on one side. And the, the salt water caused uh, shrinkages of growth. And in, in the case of uh, uh, water that's been treated with angles and shapes, you get growth. So harmonization is something that is in fact uh, very important. And I think with that I'll call it uh, uh, this introduction to biogeometry. Thank you. This is fascinating. And ancient wisdom has so much to teach us. Yes. How can we connect an understanding from your perspective with an understanding from uh, current scientific and physical principles. What, what's happening from a physics perspective that creates these effects? Well, I think it's understanding of the physics. Uh, it's it's what different levels of, of how we look at everything. We look at shapes as something, we look at particles as something, uh, but there's, there's another reality that's uh, beyond that and, and who we are and, you know, the fact, the fact that we're measuring these things and we're detecting all these things. So you have to bring in the human equation into this whole thing and a lot more work can be done. This, this field is that in an infancy. Uh, Kareem's work has, uh, there's not a huge number of publications. There's uh, press on it, on stuff that he's done. But I welcome people in this group to start looking at this because shape, color, sound, etc., are all the same things. Everything is, operates in terms of energy and waves, and that's what we find out. And that's what is, in fact, happening. And how do we modulate that to create better health? I, I hope we can connect these two realities. I think we can. Go ahead. I feel an obligation to point out a few basic facts about electromagnetic radiation, such as light, radio, and, and all of the other stuff that we work with, uh, starting with the fact that it's called electromagnetic radiation for a reason. The electric part and the magnetic part go together. You cannot separate them and still have radiation. Um, a linearly polarized wave such as you illustrated before and in one of your early slides can actually be oriented in any direction so yes you can have a wave that has vertical electric component and horizontal magnetic component you can also run it through an uh, optically active filter and rotate it 90 degrees and now the magnetic component is vertical and the electric component is, is horizontal uh, you can equally well have a circularly polarized wave in which both the electric and the magnetic field vector are spinning around, pointing in every direction as the wave propagates. Yeah. In fact, uh, the terms, I think, uh, of uh, the vertical and the analogy between electrical and these energies is maybe a little bit on the loose side uh, because how do you measure and how do you determine what's vertical, horizontal? There are ways with the tools of doing that uh, but the, the nomenclature of it is just an analogy, I believe. Yes? Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, I mean, I'm sure y you and uh, all others working in this field uh, know um, a lot about uh, what's called sacred geometry. The, there is a fundamental geometry which uh, is uh, a property of, of space, basically is a property of the zero-point energy. Anyway, I, I wouldn't go on with that because I'm not a physicist, but <laughs> I just wanted to say that, um, as you'll see in my talk, uh, I'm a, a beginner in uh, dowsing, it's called, in England, <laughs> uh, not radiesthesia. And uh, uh, I very much look forward to discussing with you privately uh, uh, how I might learn to distinguish negative green and all these things. Good. Thank you. Thank you.